Yeah, hey, come on, you're loud. <laughs> so loud. <laughs> Welcome to the Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> See, I'm also there with you. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to sit right here for a second. Uh, okay. Welcome to Jiu Jitsu Kaisen Q&A panel! Hi! Yeah. I have some awesome dudes for you guys this morning. Like, I'm super excited about these. There's like some really cool dudes. So in no particular order, please welcome to the stage, Lex Lang! And a person that both gives me joy and pain at the same time, Matthew David Rood! And one of the cutest smiles on the face of the planet, Robbie Davis! Now, you guys, like most everybody here knows everything you've ever done, ever. Uh, um, but, is your mic, are these mics not working again? Did they work? Uh, uh, yeah, there's a power button on the back. Hello? Hey! I think there's one that... Check it, check check. Okay, there it goes. There you go. Look at it. They figured it out. <laughs> Voice actors and microphones. Yes! No, yours is definitely... It works. Hey! So, uh, you guys have, like, a ton of awesome characters that you've done throughout your careers. You guys have very illustrious careers. Um, and we would be here all day if we tried to go through them all. But could you, uh, for, for those of you that may have just wandered and have no idea where they're at, uh, because it's Sunday, but last night was a long night, um, <laughs> can you introduce yourselves and maybe like who you did in Jiu Jitsu Kaisen and maybe a couple other characters that you don't know Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Lex, he's going first. <laughs> you guys were figuring out the microphone. Relax, relax. I, I came out last Mine time. works. Uh, uh, in, in Jujutsu Kaisen, I play uh, Megami Fushiguro. Uh, he's got Woo! he's got dogs. He's got dogs. They're sweet. Uh, my first ever anime was Sailor Moon. Uh, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Sailor Moon. Yeah. Yeah. This is a Sailor Moon happy con. You guys are into really the OG okay. stuff. Uh, um, and other animes, uh, uh, plenty, I guess. I'm uh, Mitsuki and Boruto. Uh, uh, I think Lex and I share a role. We, we've both done Kenshiro and Fist of the North yeah. Star. Uh, uh, we've, uh, the, the OG Alpha. Um, and uh, do a whole bunch of other stuff. In video games, I'm in Final Fantasy XV, uh, Sprunto, uh, Kechi, and Persona 5. And uh, all, all sorts of stuff. If, if you're just sitting there and it's Sunday morning, you can look your eyes and be and figure it out. <laughs> These gentlemen are much more interested. No, they're being, they're being super kind. They're like, I'm going to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is intimate. We're, you have to be dialed in because I can see all of your eyeballs. If you're I'll call you out. You're looking at your to call you out. Yeah, yeah, He's going to stare at you. Um, <laughs> My good sir, my furry reanimated friend, tell these people who you're not. He's, he's not a furry. He's a hundred percent. This is now one of the red boys. He could be a furry. We don't know yeah, what he does on the weekends. Very hairy. <laughs> no, he's a scaly animal. My name is Matt. Matthew David Rudd. I I play Panda in Jujutsu Kaisen. Woo! I play Rock Wraith Razor Tower of God. Um, uh, Botto, King Botto and Blue Lock. Uh, yeah. yeah, some good stuff. Uh, video games, I'm I'm the voice of Victor Drago in the Rocky universe. I'm, I'm Corey Taylor from Slipknot's voice match for video games. Uh, and it's some fun stuff. Yeah, fun stuff. I'm not Batman. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> Oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm Lex, uh, and I play Seguru Gato in Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Um, I, I have played Batman a few times, which is cool. Um, yeah, just a little, little, little known character. In the, in, the, in the Western animation stuff, I've, I've done um, Doctor Doom and uh, a few other characters. Uh, let's see, in um, anime, I, I go as far back as Rurouni Kenshin. Woo! Woo! Sonosuke Sagara. Yeah. Uh, of course, when you were real small watching Fox Kids, I was War Greymon! Yeah, from Digimon. No, he's losing his mind. <laughs> away. Yeah, That's my favorite Digimon. <laughs> you can just lay that on me this morning. <laughs> you don't get to just. I, I literally had private conversations with you this whole weekend. You just lay it on me. But yeah, I didn't want to turn you into a fanboy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to have War Greymon at you. And then in video games, um, <laughs> I'm. I'm Dr. Neo Cortex from Crash Bandicoot, if anybody ever plays that, and Dr. 
Doctor Doom and a bunch of stuff. And you know, go on like like Robbie said, go on to IMDb and you can check us out. I just care about one great one. <laughs> <laughs> That's super cool. So normally at this point, like yeah, I head off all the the free glance questions, like how do you get the voice acting and all that. And I've done that all week this week, so I'm going off the script for a while, for a while. Um, as artists, you guys like. When you're in the creative field, you have to do like a lot of different things, and also just a lot of things to fill your soul. What are some of the other stuff besides acting that you guys are into? Like, like I know Matt does a deep lot sea of fishing. <laughs> I still haven't got a chance to go. Your weather sucks. <laughs> 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 what the heck? You're not gonna build it around my plans. I want to go catch a fish and dump rain on me, you dirts. <laughs> uh, outside of that. Much like just uh, just kind of a dude, dude. I'm a country boy. I grew up in a tiny little town in Missouri. I like I like outside stuff. I spend most of my day uh, locked in a box, screaming <laughs> into the abyss. So when I have free time, I like to take my kids to the park. I, I hike a lot. I, I play sports on the weekends with my, my friends who are able to meet up. A bunch of four-year-old dads playing flag football. I, I tweaked my gym neck in the gym this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but outside of that, uh, I'm, I'm musical. I play guitar for my kids. I uh, uh, creatively, uh, I, I'm a writer. I've written a couple kids' books. Um, and then, uh, as I get a little older, we've moved in the production field, so uh, I have two partners, uh, business partners that we've got a lot of endeavors with, and we're, uh, we're making a video game right now, and, uh, oh. but like a, a real video game with like an actual publisher's on it, I can't tell you anything about it, but it's, it's <laughs> yeah, like a real thing, so, so it's, awesome. yeah, it's, it's fun though, um, sort of like um, being a part of something that, um, you're creating on your own. I haven't done that in a long time. That was a lot of my early career. Like when you're just starting off, you have to make your own stuff. But uh, yeah, outside of that, I'm just kind of just, just a normal old dude. Just a dude, just a dude. So normal, That's really just a, old dude. Just a really old dude. <laughs> Handsome though. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, yeah I, 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 I think we all have to have outside interests. If you get too caught up in your work, uh, that's all you ever talk about, and nobody likes you. Don't be that person. <laughs> Go out to dinner and be like, let me tell you about Becky in the office. And everybody goes, we don't know her. We don't want to hear this story. So yeah, I hope you guys all find something that makes you happy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I love music. I love playing music. I play guitar. I play bass. I play drums. I play keyboards. Love Just going down the list of love instruments. Love riding. Like, yeah, I've been doing it so long. Yeah. <laughs> I play kazoo really good. Uh, so I love doing that. I love to play cards too. I love playing poker, Texas Hold'em poker. What? I really love playing that. Oh, yeah, that's War Grandma. And I'm War Grandma. This you is know that? Uh, you my dad. <laughs> I am your dad. I, <laughs> I was going to tell you that today too. Uh, uh, I have four pets. I have three dogs and a cat that all rescues and. Uh, my wife is Sandy Fox, who's the uh, actress that's also Woo! here as a guest. You know, she's uh, she views on all these other things, and we love to go outside with our dogs and throw the ball and the frisbees and stuff with the dogs. And um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's those are the two main things, though. Music and poker. Like when I have spare time, I try to do that. Oh, I also I have an Oculus, you know, Oculus Two, one of those, and I love playing VR games as well. They're really fun. Because you can play with anybody anywhere in the world, so all the friends that I have that are in different states and you know all across the U.S. We we get on every Tuesday night and we we'll play uh, whether it be uh, mini golf and they have this thing called walkabout mini golf that's actually quite fun, and then or like zombie games we'll go on and we'll you know take down a bunch you of zombies. Play VR poker with people across. Oh, I do that too. <laughs> but I, I have a bunch of old games. Yeah, yeah, poker stars, VR poker, I do golf. Yeah, deep sea fishing. Yeah, <laughs> he, goes, he gets to go deep sea fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but it's a lot of fun. I love that stuff. I actually went to art school before becoming an actor. Before I was ever interested in becoming an actor, um, so I do a lot of art stuff creatively. Uh, a lot of my prints at my table are my own artwork. Um, my t-shirt designs that I do are my own uh, things. And like these two guys, you know, I, you'd be surprised how many of us come from a music background. I grew up playing guitar and bass and drums. Um, being in garage bands and stuff like that, so yeah, lots of lots of creative. He stuff. also makes really sick props. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I got to record in his booth, and it's it's also just sort of like a, a museum of cool things that he's made, and yeah. there's a lot of really cool props on it. 
He's a very good artist too. If you go to his table after this or check out some of his prints, they're really very good. They're really good. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I love that you can't be serious for like a second. <laughs> <laughs> that is, what you're experiencing is how he is at all times. So, so just, right before we all got on stage, Corey goes, all right, guys, it's just going to be, let me get my Corey voice. He's like, all right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we sell it? It's just going to be a really chill, laid back panel. No, man, I think it's like, oh, Corey, look at the panel. <laughs> They've all seen it before. It was a little dumbed down. Like they know what, what I, I was accosting them basically. Yeah. So now it's time to ask the question. If you got any questions about Jesus Kaisen, or heck, you know what? I'm doing anything. You can be about anything. You can be literally about whatever, as long as you're yeah. 13 or under. Oh, <laughs> almost <laughs> any. Almost any. I could feel Robbie giving me a side eye like, don't you give them license. <laughs> don't you dare. You and your stupid copycat hat. <laughs> 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 all right. Does anybody have any questions? Any, uh, any at all? Because I've got another one. That's, that's what we're here for. Yes. Yes. yes we're here to talk to you. I was going to say, like, so, Lex, when you're playing Gaito, um, like, did he get some notes from Frieza when he was, like, <laughs> calling people monkeys and shit? I know. It's, it does seem pretty drastic. But, yeah, I think he just thinks that they're so uh, unevolved that that was the best term he could come up with. <laughs> the people he was literally trying to protect showed actions that were so backwards that he's like, look, these, they're just like monkeys. They're not even like human beings anymore. Then. So, yeah, it is, it is pretty slash sort of, um, I won't say racist. Not everything but, translates uh, quite so well in all modern adaptations. I get I didn't I write it. I get, I get, I get, I get, well, I get where you're going with it. You just got to take it for what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what's this really happening. Like, no, like, <laughs> oh, thank you. Have you guys yeah. gotten a chance to watch the first episode of season two? Anyone? Anyone seen it? It's freaking awesome, yeah. right? Lex is gonna have some really, really Do good Gojo, stuff. Do Gojo and G Gato finally kiss in that first episode? No, they got not It's in episode three. It's in the closing credits. They've been waiting for all of them throughout the whole month. They love each other a lot, so I'm not sure how much. <laughs> I heard, uh, I haven't watched it yet, I'm really excited because I do watch the show, I heard the animation is like super smooth. Super it's smooth. Like, like, yeah, yeah, like It's not, like the movie almost, it's like really yeah, it's the cool. same people that did the movie are now doing season two. So. Yeah, it's like, I heard there's like a little less shadow, a little less detail, but the fluidity of it yeah, is yeah. Was where it comes back. That's about all I'm watching. I was really impressed. Yeah. I and, the, and the kiss between Ghost yeah, and yeah. <laughs> Really Smart close up. It was really Smart close up. Confession. Like, I generally like because I grew up with anime. I've seen a lot. I've not seen Jujutsu Kaisen. Watch the movie for if you haven't seen Jujutsu Kaisen. I, I'm pretty sure everybody has. I know everyone's but, like, If you haven't seen it yet, start with the movie because that's zero. That comes oh, before really? that season one. It's a great way to start. The it's really good. I'm gonna start. Okay, cool. Watch the movie. Do you have any other questions? Anymore? Yeah. It's I questions. bet you've got lots. Yeah. Once we break the ice, they start coming out. Yeah. That's a good. I like how you ordered that. That's a good question. So your most popular line and your favorite line. They forgot never uh, they never done. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think uh, for Megami when he does his domain expansion, when he just finally busts it out, is, is probably one of the most like requested lines that I get all the time. And it's just a it's but, but attack call outs are very often the most popular, but the thing about it in that moment is that it's story driven and it's like it's like when you know uh, a character levels up, and that's always everybody's favorite moment is when is when you get to see uh, in, in the trope someone like uh, surpass their limits and, and break through to a new level. Now, did you guys know this an anime trope? No, you never heard of that. Uh, <laughs> happens five times in One Piece. Uh, but, but, uh, but I think that's one of, the, and I think one of my favorites is uh, I like his more dead, dead, deadpan moments. Yeah. Or, like my favorite lines, like episode one, he's like, I'm gonna punch you. Like, that's my favorite. Like, we had a choice on that one, and we were like, what is this guy like? And we could have gone, like, I want to punch you! But we're like, no, 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 just deadpan. And I like that. And, like, uh, Yuji's, like, uh, peeking in his room when he first comes to the high school, he's like, get out of my room, and, like, smashes his head in the door. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I never get to play this kind of character, so it's pretty fun. I think for Ghetto, you know, he was so disappointed to see that the people he was literally trying to protect were willing to torture his kind, like the, the sorcerers. And he has a couple, I wrote them down too because I love them, but like one of them is, 
it's just that in a world like this, I can't laugh from my heart at all. Like that sums up how oh, tragic, oh, 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 how damn. tragic he feels that is. You know, that's like crazy. You don't get to ooh in that. Yeah. I get to ooh in whatever I want. That sounds so poignant. And then um, I think the other one is similar to that. It's just I, I couldn't wear a heartfelt smile living in this world. Like just after he saw what they were capable of. See, out of context, it's like, I can't. I can't. You know. But one of my favorites is funny. But sorry, but I don't have time to talk to monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> that's poignant. <laughs> I, I think some of the fan favorite stuff for Panda is the goofier stuff, you know, like, I'm your Panda, I don't understand human speak, they, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but some of my favorite, some of my favorite moments are, are him and Toge specifically, where he, he acts as like the bridge because Toge can't speak. Um, you know, the idea that like he has to explain what, what Toge's powers are so that he doesn't hurt other people's feelings. Um, fish roll, fish roll. Uh, salmon <laughs> things. Whatever. Um, and I love in the movie, I love the little tag team moment between him and, and Toge where he's like, he says something, and Pan was like, I was just distracting you for a second, and then he ducks, and Toge goes, Plum it! And, yeah, 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 that, I think. I love it. I think my favorite line in all of the first season is when Junpei goes, <laughs> <laughs> You guys don't watch the show! But that would have been hilarious! <laughs> R.I.P. It was so chaotic. It was the most unhinged I've seen this week. Uh, another question. We got another question. Raise those hands. Yes. Who would you choose to cast as your favorite power? Ooh, favorite power. It's okay. <laughs> he doesn't have powers, does he? Get to punch him. That's too much. That's too much. Uh, that's too much. Uh, I'm talking about Toge Unamaki, the guy that says what he wants and it happens. You know, oh, he says yeah. plummet to, to Lex's character and maybe like goes in a hole, basically. You know, I, I like that part. I'd misuse it. I'd be like sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I'd get a sandwich. That's power. What was yours, Lex? You said that they were maximum Uzumaki. You know, we got a thousand curses happening at once. You're ready to go. Whoa, that was. <laughs> oh, that was blowing, oh, blowing Corey's mind with everything. <laughs> I, know. I, I love this experience of having because it's out of context. I understand nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know, but it's one of those things that somehow like I miss. I don't know how it happened. All right, so another question. Anybody else got another? Yes. The question was when we did Jujutsu Kaisen Zero the movie. How was it? getting to revisit our characters, those who were in it. Um, well, for me, it was actually really good because it, in season one, there wasn't a lot of information, at least the director didn't have a lot of information for us as to what our characters were all about. And in season, um, not season two, but in the film, the director had read all the manga, had seen the whole season, had really studied the movie, so she knew everything there was to know about all these characters. So for me personally, I was able, able to take a much deeper dive into the character. And you can kind of see it if you watch season one, then you watch the movie, you can see that Gato is much more like evolved as a character in the movie than he was in season one. I didn't so, like your answer. Hey, I, 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 I promise I'll answer better next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, run while you still can, go, go. <laughs> Simultaneous bathroom run. Okay, uh, but yeah, it was, it, I really enjoyed it. And it, it, as a result, going into season two, I have such a deeper understanding for Gato that I think it's just going to be a next level uh, in terms of performance and character and everything. So I'm really, I'm super excited. I'm caught up with the manga. I'm, I'm psyched. I'm watching the episodes before we do them in English, so I know the entire episode. So I'm really excited. I hope you are too. Yeah, Lex and I were having this conversation this morning. The, the the first season was a little bit chaotic, at least in the beginning. It was like one of the very first productions that happened after COVID, and so we were all learning to record from home or whatever technicalities we had to deal with. I'm sure the studio was dealing with a ton. And you see our you see our our evolution over the course of the first season, but I think revisiting in the movie. Um, you know, I was talking about some of those moments where Panda's kind of doing the Big Brother thing and like explaining, you know, how to interact with the world or whatever. But uh, you know, I saw glimpses of that in season one, 
when he like jumps in to protect, protect Nobara and stuff like that. I was like, I knew that was part of his character. But then to see the quiet moments in the movie where we really kind of broke that down and he did act like a big brother to everyone in the movie, I, I enjoyed those. I was great from the very first episode. So, <laughs> you know what these guys are talking about. I knew. Tone. I knew. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're all getting my sense of humor, right? <laughs> all right. I'm getting it. I'm sure that I'm not a jerk, right? Okay, good. It's very Shatner esque. And you all really loved his performance in the movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> Objectively, I was the best part. <laughs> Don't set me up if you can't be ready for me to knock him down, baby. <laughs> I, I, I like to think that there's like one guy that's seen you in all of your panels so hard. It's like, he is so confident. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a lot. He's like, I want that. I just want to bottle it and drink it. <laughs> another question. Another question. Anybody? Yes. Excluding any present works that you're doing right now, what is the favorite character that you've portrayed? That you've portrayed? Something that's in the can, done? That yeah. we, in the past that we've done? In the past. Okay. Yeah. It's a tough question to answer. Can it, be, can it be anything like a video game or regular animation or anything like that? Well, for me, probably, I got to play Han Solo in a lot of different video games. Wow. And so, when I was 16 years old, I was just telling Matt this earlier, we, we would go to like Star Trek slash Star Wars conventions, and me and all my friends would cosplay as the Star Wars people, you know, and I was cosplaying as Han Solo. So fast forward 20 plus years, and I get to audition for Han Solo, and then it boils down from like a really big group of actors, down, 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 until it's like me and another actor. And then I get the call from my agent, which was actually a funny call because she called and she was pretending like she, that I didn't get it. She oh, was that's like, so she was like, no. That is so mean. Are you doing okay today? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, you know, you know how you're up for that Han Solo thing. I just wanted to say, you know, you did such a good job of auditioning, and they're really, the whole office was rooting for you, and um, I just have to say, you got the part. And I was just like, oh wow, that's really cool. And then I hung up, and I'm like, woo! Yeah! And I'm running around the house, joy! And I'm like, that is so mean. <laughs> Hold on, just a second. I just, you're like, like, yeah, I like, I like that lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sense of humor. I was like, wow. that was really funny. Yeah. You got me. Yeah. I, I, uh, uh, that's a hard question because, like, it has a lot of factors to do. Is, is it? Is it your favorite performance? Is it your favorite? Is it the character that you like the most? As how much time did you spend with that character? That's a big one for me. Like, like my perform, my favorite performance of mine in an anime, I think, is a movie called The Silent Voice. I think that's my my favorite anime film that, or anime that I've ever done. But I spent like three and a half years working on Final Fantasy XV. And like that character is like near and dear to my heart, so that's a really tough question. I mean, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, there's a lot. You know, when we've done a lot of characters, it becomes like a parent trying to choose their favorite child. You know, they all have different, you know, <laughs> points. Of the world, really. It's easy. My favorite is my favorite child. I love that every time that analogy is brought up, every parent that's like an actual parent's like, oh, I have no, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> But so when you have 500 children, it's harder to pick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, might, I know what my favorite session was. Uh, uh, I'm like a, a, a big, uh, I'm, I'm a 90s kid, uh, so I was like, I love Seinfeld. It was like my favorite show, and uh, I learned like comedy from Seinfeld. Yeah, with voiceover. Yeah, it's my favorite. Get it! Uh, but uh, but uh, anyway, uh, the, Wayne Knight, he, he's an uh, actor. He played uh, Newman in Jurassic Park, or er, Newman in Seinfeld, and he was in Jurassic Park. And That's it. He's just so funny. Uh, he came in and guest star on a show that I was one of the main characters on, and it was just him and I for like three and a half hours, and they just kind of like let us improv and riff and all this sort of stuff. And uh, it wasn't really the celebrity factor. It was just someone that was important to me, and he was so funny. And just getting to have that experience, and we walked into our cars together and shot the. And now they're inseparable. I mean. Yeah, yeah, we're best friends. Uh, we moved in next door, and every time I see them, I go. Uh, but uh, some of the moments like that, I think, are, are more, even more memorable than the characters that we play. Sometimes, uh, personally, for me, at least. For, for me, um, <laughs> <laughs> 
what? <laughs> uh, Rock, Rock Greg Grazer uh, stands out in my mind because he was my first kind of lead character that I that I booked, and I, I felt really, I mean, I felt really good about that. It was, uh, I felt good about my audition, and then I booked it, and you know that that was so that'll stand out for me. Um, I love that I am playing some. Like I said, a couple of video games I play. I'm in Rocky Universe. I mean, I'm Corey Taylor from Slipknot. I grew up with Slipknot, and so things like that are super cool for me. That that I had to audition, and then like for for Corey Taylor in specific, I had to be approved by him to be his voice double. Um, you know, that's that's super fun for me. Um, I, I think when I look back on my anime career. You know, of course, Pan is going to be a big part of it, but but Baro from Blue Block, I think I'm going to look back really fondly on on him. I think he's a much more complex character than than I've had a chance to play before. So, you know, it's some good stuff. That's awesome. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's really cool. Another question? Any, any at all? Yes. Um, Robbie kind of answered that. Arabin starts. Uh, uh, Overwhelmed being somebody you grew up with, liking at a convention or out in public as an actor, like ever been like, oh, I got to meet you, I'm so happy. So, yeah, so all four of you. Yeah, okay. all four. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, did we, so we had uh, Star Trek, like somebody you've gotten to work with or meet while you've been working that really. For you, it was me, right? <laughs> no, it was for me, it was you. <laughs> I, I was in uh, the same waiting room as Mark Hamill. <laughs> uh, we were, we were going to be going to different studios together, and I was just 100% shut down as a human being because I was like, "Oh my God, there he is! He's sitting right there!" And, oh, oh, you know. So I was, I was pretty excited. And eventually, I said, "Hi, how are you doing?" He said, Hello. You know, he doesn't sound like that. He doesn't sound like that. But he was uh, super duper nice and like the coolest guy. And um, you know, I didn't ultra geek out and ask for can I get a photo. You know, but we were both waiting to go in to our studios, but. It was super duper nice, and then like a couple days later, I was at that same studio, and Stan Lee walked out uh, of the walls. And uh, I, for him, I did actually ask if I could get a photo <laughs> with him because he was, he was coming by. I was like, "Yeah, I played Doctor Doom in Avengers: Earth's Mightiest Zero. She's like, "That's my favorite one." And I was like, yeah. and I said, "What Stan Lee?" And I got to meet him in the weirdest way possible. <laughs> and so I actually I was thinking, I was like, "Cause it's down to three. It's like Chris Savage was one that." Uh, but that one's the funniest one because I didn't expect it to happen because there was a con. So I'm going to TLDR this because they're going to have more important answers than I do because <laughs> this is not going to happen. But this one was funny. It was a con and it was like this tragedy of a convention. <laughs> it was on New Year's Eve. They promised like 40,000 people to attend at this first year con. Oh, yeah. 1,500 people showed up. I was at the first one of those. The, the, the Marvelous New Year's Eve? No. You weren't there. I was, no, I was at OKC, their first one. Oh, oh yeah. When they thought 50,000 people were going to show up at 50. So you were at the BOKC? 50? 50? Yeah, I was at that one. Do you guys remember back the meme back in the day that was the, um, the, uh, uh Ball pit me. <laughs> so we had the same thing. They ran. I, I shouldn't be laughing because someone lost their ass. Like, you know what I mean? Like I mean, somebody. I feel bad because some poor investor got duped. Oh. It was in Oklahoma, and they uh, they they scheduled on the same day as opening day of Sooners football, and uh, had like no advertising. Oh, wow. And then we were all there, just like, oh no, this is so sad. I was sad. We showed those 50 people a great time. They had a, they had an arena, a 15,000 person arena set up with like a jumbotron, and like Doctor Who was there. There were like five people in the audience, and then Max and Ray and I walked out on stage, and there were three people in the audience. And so we just sat down and talked to them. We're like, this is tough. But the funny part was, it, like much like the ball pits, they cordoned off like football fields worth of uh, blow up bounce houses for all of the thousands of children that were going to attend. <laughs> so this was like a couple months after the ball pit incident and me and Max Ray definitely took pictures in those bounce houses <laughs> just in an empty concrete jungle <laughs> and we were like can we come down from upstairs in the massive this ballroom where we were signing there were like 40 guests the ballroom was like five times as big as this somebody really got handled I feel so bad no, they but didn't because they, they tried again so, <laughs> they, 
and they, it was worse. They canceled the one after that immediately after that, and then they did this one. Yeah. With, which took so you were at that. This is con legend stuff, you guys. <laughs> this is <laughs> Marvel Avengers. They brought in even more guests. I think there were fifty, and one of which they brought in fifty guests, and one of which is Stan Lee. Yeah. And Stan Lee was expensive. So just as a, a, a myriad of things that happen, because there's like a thing in the contract where you have to make a certain amount of hotel room sales. Don't let them know how the sauce is made. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an important story. Everyone got kicked out of the room Saturday night. Like everyone in the hotel got kicked out of the rooms. And so just all kinds of chaos is going on. And so I'm just like, I just got done doing my panel, which had no seats in it. <laughs> Because they did not put any seats or sound system in the panel, so I was just in a blank panel room. And I'm going upstairs, and I'm just like traumatized. And this little rascal pulls up next to me, and I look over, and it's Stanley, <laughs> and he's like, "How you doing?" And I was like, "I was like, uh, this is honestly a train wreck." And he's like, "I know. Don't tell him where I am." And he's like, he had escaped his handlers, and so he just rides off. 15 minutes later, because the elevators are down and they're not working, I'm still standing in this elevator. These, like, just beleaguered to the handlers, like, have you seen Stan Lee? And I was like, nope. <laughs> he had escaped no, no, no. over there. Let, let me tell you a positive Stan Lee story. <laughs> he's not escaping fans on a rascal. No, he's escaping his handler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not escaping fans. He's uh, really cool. uh, <laughs> recorded a few times together for Spider-Man. Uh, he came in and guest starred on all of our seasons when he was uh, still capable. This is in like 2015, 16, 17, somewhere around there. And uh, he does have handlers and it was awesome. And, and he came in and we were doing some press stuff after the recording and they piggy piggybacked on. And like they had to reintroduce me as like, yeah, this is Robbie. He's been playing, playing Spider-Man on the show. And he's like, ah, oh, get over here. Can't great the rain show. He comes in these massive hands. Alien hands, they're huge. And um, I remember we did this photo op together and we, we took pictures and everything was done. And, and he was like, So you're Spider Man, huh, kid? And I was like, Yeah, yeah. And he goes, Well, I'll tell you what, you just get out there and you keep fighting crime. And then he like dotted off and I literally went, oh! <laughs> Like a little tear rolled down my face. But uh, yeah, I, I think those moments that you have with like your legends, I did the same thing with, with Mark too. And we recorded together and I couldn't bring myself to ask for a photograph. And he was taking photographs with everybody afterwards and I was too much of a chicken baby. Like Luke Skywalker was like my hero as a kid. And we worked together and he was playing Baron Zemo on the show and then everybody's like, he was telling stories about shooting on Star Wars, and it was a perfect opportunity. I just sat there, and I'm usually like so confident. So yeah, I did, I did get, I did get starstruck on that one. Yeah, but um, yeah, you meet these people, and they're mostly just people. They're really, they're really nice if you just ask them and talk to them. Yeah, my my just people moment was at my very first convention I ever did, um, and it kind of shook me out of the whole starstruck thing. But when you met me that one time, yeah, when I met Lance. <laughs> No, this is the very first convention I did. I was just like, you know, I was brand newbie, didn't know what I was doing, and I, and I was really excited about the other people that there were there with me. And, and we, we all know Michaela Murphy, maybe um, she was top from uh, from Avatar. She she was there with me, and and that was a thing. I was like, holy shit, I'm here with with Avatar people, right? This is so cool what I'm doing and all that. And I was I was kind of nervously trying to think about how to introduce myself the whole time. And after a day worth of listening to me be a jackass and, inter and, and, and like interact with fans or whatever, she just stood up and from across, you know, she was like three booths down from me or whatever. She goes, hey, you! And I was like, me? And she goes, you're cool. I want to be friends with you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I literally took a break and I went up to my hotel room and I called my wife and I was like, no, the voice actor she plays to off and have to be friends with me. It's a really good day. And, uh, I like, gathered myself and went back down. And, you know, we're, we're really good friends now. I stayed at her house a bunch. She stayed at my house when she's in town. Um, but yeah, anyway, it was fun. It's funny because that's a uh, similar same story because it was I met both her and Greg at the same time. It was also yeah. just as overwhelming. Greg's the second Iro. Yeah. He's exactly like Iro. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got broken of all my star status except for, for Mark uh, really early when I moved to LA, and it wasn't from uh, 
it wasn't from being in the business, it was from my survival job. I was like a super uh, high-end bartender for a very high-end company, and we bartended like billionaire with a bee's house. I've met Obama like four different times. And like, but one of the biggest, but like the biggest event that we've ever done uh, is there's an agency uh, in Los Angeles called CAA, and uh, I would uh, I was center bartender for uh, their company Chris Christmas party at the president's house every, every not not Obama the president the president of CAA's house every every time. And when I tell you that this was ninety five percent like AAA celebrities, it was at like hundreds of them. It was the most bizarre out of body experience. <laughs> And I was, and everybody loved the bartender because we're making, making, making drinks for you. And uh, it was just person after person after person. And I was like, if this house blew up right now, if there was like a gas leak, eighty percent of Hollywood's just gone. <laughs> so I did that for, I did that job for three years. I did that party for three times while I was like my survival job, and like it desensitized me to celebrities. I was like, oh, you're all just sloppy idiots. I was like, you're just, you all just want a decent Manhattan. Yeah, don't worry, it's fine. And, uh, but then I, I had my, uh, you know, like celebrities are just like us moment, except the opposite is that this, one of these things is not like the other, is I, I'm probably breaking NDAs, but they're 15 years old, who cares? <laughs> I, uh, I bartended Reese Witherspoon's wedding uh, in Ojai, and it was like a banger. It was like 500 people, and they were all celebrities. I'm definitely breaking NDAs, you know, I don't care. <laughs> uh, and like, they had, it's not a joke, they had, helicopters circling the event because they were chasing away other paparazzi helicopters. They had like secret security agents out in the woods a half a mile away because they were people with telescopic lenses sitting in trees in the woods off the property. And that was one of those moments I had where I was like, this isn't a normal way. <laughs> I was like, you people are weird. But it was lovely and everyone was very nice and I'm definitely not bringing NDA because nothing bad happened with anybody that entire evening. That snipers in the trees taking out the people. Like, what, what is it like being hired as like a black ops operative? Your mission. With, with your spirit spirit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I am. I think they're getting divorced. Like, right? yeah. Aren't they? Yeah. Anybody, anybody yeah. into it? They're getting divorced. Yeah. Right? Your NDA can't overlast their own, their own vow. That's right. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter because none of these people are old enough. To exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. Really good. Yeah. I think we got time for a few more questions. If you got me, uh, we've got a few more minutes left. Yes. This is the one that left in the middle of your last question. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 27 years actually we've been together and uh, early on. Yeah, woo! We've the test of time. I mean, Hollywood, that's like 100 years to the other area. Um, but there were a couple times when, you know, uh, I had been doing some Antonio Banderas voice matching. And like, <laughs> we had some like romantic oh things going on. It's just like, let me, let, me, let me hear your Antonio Banderas. I'm like, what? Right now you want to do that. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of funny. Uh, What's really funny is watching her answer the phone sometimes because she'll go, hello, and I can tell that the, she's got a very high voice, and I can tell that the person thinks it's a child on the phone, <laughs> and then she, they ask, like, is your mom there? And it's a solicitor most of the time. And if she, she told the story the other night, like, she doesn't want to talk to the person, she'd be like, oh, my dolly, you know, like, she'd be talking about her little doll or whatever, but if the person, she finds out it's someone she does want to talk to, she'd be like, hold on, <laughs> and then she goes, hello? You know, like, uh, um, yeah, we do some funny stuff when we get solicitors. I tend to 
run them around a little bit with different voices. He played us a six minute clip last night yeah. of him messing with this solicitor. Yeah, the solicitor that said my social security was in danger of being canceled and there was a warrant out for my arrest or something. And so I did like this Texan guy going, oh, I can't, I just got out of jail, man. <laughs> you can't take my social security with me. I got a warrant out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, for the most part, you know, uh, we do most of our voice stuff when we're working, and when we're around the house, we're just a regular couple, you know, doing our thing. I do love that your bonding thing in your relationship is messing with solicitors. <laughs> <laughs> our marriage is built on a lot of solicitors. <laughs> but yeah, she's awesome. She's just really an amazing woman, so, yeah. I, I basically am the... You know how they say my better half? She literally is my better half. I mean, I'm, I got a lot of work to do. So she says. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, what's your favorite character other than like the character that you play as? In Jujutsu Kaisen or? Yeah. Favorite character is not yours. Uh, the, the standard answer is Nanami. Nanami, but uh, Tsukuna actually I think is pretty, pretty damn cool. I like that guy with the volcano for a head. He's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my legit favorite is Toga. I keep talking about the guy that says speaks his intentions into his existence. He's my favorite. And I really like Panda a lot too. Yeah, I like Panda too. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a Sukuna stan. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like OP characters and like. I like the fact that he just leans into it. <laughs> like I know I like a character that goes Anybody reading the manga? What'd you say? Anybody reading the manga out there? So we know Super Super Nice Guts. Yeah. Pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is psychotic. <laughs> I have no context. I have no idea. <laughs> this, this is wild. I can't wait to see this show. Yes, one last one. What do you got? Rock Nuts sticks out to you that had the best energy from beginning to end. The, the, the what? Rock Nuts energy, just in general. What a project we've worked on. Yeah. Best energy. Just good vibes. Well, the, 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 the recent energy has been very solitary. So we're not going yeah. to I'm just honestly, like, we're, we're, I've been going back to the studio for a while, but like even still, we're not fully back yet. Like just recently, are we starting to see directors and producers and stuff coming back? So, so it would probably be even be something from the past, yeah. But that's what best vibes overall from the project. You know, what's interesting is with anime, we're working by ourselves, even if we're home and we're not home, we're at the studio, we're still by ourselves that day, and all we see is the director and maybe an engineer, right? But when we do Western animation, like when Robbie does Spider-Man, or when I do Justice League or Batman or whatever, we work with an entire cast. So that's always really fun, and a lot of times there's like celebrities in that cast. So that can be very exciting too, because you get to rehearse the, the show once through before you, usually, the way we do with the like, um, you know, Justice League Unlimited and those kind of things. And then, Justice League Unlimited? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll go share my resume with you later. Stop dropping this crap over here. So you're sharing with the goat, Andre Romano. Oh, Andrea Romano, yeah. You're sharing with the goat. Yeah, she's the goat, for sure. She's the best ever. But it, that's usually the most fun when we have is when we get together with the whole cast and we get to like see everybody performing and then it gets animated after we do the recording because that original animation works like that. Yeah. So whether it's Avatar The Last Airbender that I'm working on or... Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Settle uh, down, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I, but honestly, you know, in the, for, for Jujutsu Kaisen in general, I mean, it's cold. We, we don't get to work together in studio, but the whole cast, we do so many shows together. Uh, I mean, everyone's become like, friends and family feeling sort yeah. of thing. We know yeah. each other so well. And this show has great energy with the cast. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. And when um, we do these shows, you know, when we do these cons, we really do become really good friends over the years, you know? You know? Like Robbie. What? Yeah. 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 Robbie pretends to be a really good friend a lot of the time. <laughs> I don't know if it's the opposite. I pretend to be an asshole, but I'm actually yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go for an asshole, we say, but it's, uh, no, no, we don't say that. Uh, love, Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like to take I'll keep it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I, I think those of us who choose to be social uh, at cons and stuff really enjoy each other's company. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, uh, 
for show wise, the vibes at Nickelodeon are pretty immaculate. Uh, I, that's one of my favorite places to work. Um, and then Cartoon Network, I really enjoyed. Uh, the sad part is they're closing the they're closing yeah. the biz. They're closing. Mm. Sorry, they're, yeah, they're moving. They're, they're, closing. they're closing the OG building in Burbank and moving to uh, I think Warner Brothers lot or something like that. It's kind of a bummer because that space is like iconic for me and most people and like just in a personal sense for like. Here. The space there is so cool. We did a show called OKKO OK there, and uh, the vibes are great on OKKO. OK it was just a big group. She loves it. Good, that's a good show. Uh, uh, it was a regular really good show there. there. That was really good. <laughs> and, and, and Nickelodeon, we did, um, Nickelodeon done a bunch of shows at Nickelodeon, but uh, I, I think like one of my first is one of my most memorable, which was the show called Breadwinners. And uh, it was like my first real experience in a Nickelodeon lead. I'd done a bunch of guest stars, but never a lead. And it was every Tuesday because we always had pickups for like three and a half years. And it was me and Eric Bauza, and we were always the two main characters. But then the guest stars were so banger. And like our repeating guest stars were so good. It was Carter Walker and Fred Tatasher. And uh, oh my God, um, Roger was would come in all the time. It was just. So much fun, and then we would do our thing, and then like, and then the guest stars would come in, and it, the creators were running it, and the room was like low on suits, like there weren't that many execs, and I, it just felt like we had like free range, and that is so so rare. And it's a little bit of a bummer because now even when I go do cartoons, it used to be a four-hour session with the group, which is what what Lex was talking about. Now I go do a cartoon if I'm a guest star, or even if I'm a series regular, and I'll do my thing on my own. Mm -hmm. Like in like ninety minutes, and I'll and I'll, and I'll just be like, oh, did I just do a cartoon series? Oh. I just do a cartoon. Yeah, it doesn't feel it doesn't quite feel as good, and it's a little bit sad. I hope we get back. I hope we get back fully to group records. Uh, I, I, we're getting there, but like, yeah, I think someday we will. I but the so. yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. But the vibes are. Uh, we're waiting for them to come back in a good way. They will. Well, guys, give it up for these absolute. Woo! 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 Anyways, uh, they'll be at their booths in uh, in the exhibit hall for a little bit. Some of them are flying out, uh, so I don't. So get it while you can. Be fast. Uh, and if you have any other burning questions, ask them at the booth. Yeah. Give it up one more time for them. And, uh, Thank you guys so much for spending the evening with us. Go for it. Thank you guys. Good.